What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's talk about it. This is the truth behind the Master P and Mystical. Well, you could say beef, but it's more like the situation. Um, Master P was dictator, ruler, of thumb of No Limit Records. Now, his rise to success blew up with Make Them Say Uh. When Make Them Say Uh came out on the Ghetto Dope album, that took the album to a whole new stratosphere. People love that song. They played it at football games. It was on video games. But the standout of that song was Mystical. Him, Mystical performed to close that song out was the highlight of that song in that record. And that was the that was basically the push they needed to get that to the next level. Now remember, through the course of this, Snoop was signed in the middle of it. So Mystical Album is a monster smash. Uh, you know, what was that, Unpredictable? So Unpredictable comes out, crushing it. Just completely crushed it. And he's the biggest star next to Master P on the lane. Snoop was signed, but Snoop was there, and that was just a big name to have Snoop there. And that album was dope. We all bought it. A lot of people bought the album, sold a million copies. It was more like Pimp Snoop. He was back. <laughs> and for this reason, Mystical and, and Snoop and all these guys sat down and talked and they were working together like, okay, we're going to work on your album. So Mystical did a lot more than just be an artist. But this helped bring him into the spectrum <clears throat> of what he liked and what he was comfortable with. Then the growth of No Limit. Too many artists, too many miles to feed, and not a lot of them can see the bigger picture down the road. And that's what Master P was fighting against. People have the ghetto mentality they see Master P got an interview doing on the radio station and this and that. And Master P got this coming with a movie. Master P got this. And Master P going to be at the radio station. And then another an artist. And even with Mystical, it was like that. that people could be a little envious. And a lot of that played into play when it came down to negotiations, when people wanted to get their money, when that big re-up check came in and everybody was, all right, this is the payoff. And k them didn't like their cuts. You know, it's a lot of people who left during this time because they felt, hey, I was supposed to get, you know, the big money. This is what we were working towards, putting out all these records so we can get the big money. And they start seeing P was rich. P's in the Forbes. 40, he made 40 something million. And then they see it in the source magazines. There it is, Diddy, Master P. And they was like, wait a minute, what is going on over here? How did this happen? There's Russell Simmons, <laughs> Diddy. And Master P. So it shocked a lot of people. It shocked them. Now, they're seeing all this happening. They won't know, like, what's in it for them? Like, beats by the pound. Like, look, we made the beats. What's going on? And K and Mystical, they were really tight. Like, all these dudes was, like, really tight. Then... <laughs> 
you know, pieces of business, man. Like, look, I own the name Beat by the Pound. You heard? So you want to step, step. He can go. But the name Beats by the Pound going to stay. We'll bring some other people in here and make beats. It's kind of how Diddy ran things. You know, he had, Diddy had the hitman. And that produced their beats up at Daddy's house. He had a team of writers. 50 Cent was one of them. He had a team of beat makers. The hitman. They would produce the beats. Diddy would put his name on them and track it. And there you have it. Done and done. Then it'd be like, okay, produced by the hitman. Well, who owns the hitman? Diddy does. He owns that title, so he pays them what he felt like. Same thing here. Beats by the pound was owned by Master P. So that means he's going to pay you what he feel like. Now, you can get mad and leave and go make beats somewhere else. But Beats by the Pound, that name belongs to Master P. Now, Mystical's got to work with these new producers. You know, on his uh, At the Ghetto Fabulous album, he's just not feeling it. You know, he was sticking with the team, being a team guy, and he, like, he ain't feeling that. A lot of people ain't feeling it in No Limit, and P's not listening. P's thinking, look, it's my money. I run the company, make the beats with whoever I say. And P was just like, P, this ain't, I don't think this is working out. You sure we can't get k back in here? We got these New York beat makers in here. They don't know nothing about what we doing. They don't get it. And we got to try to work with these dudes. We don't like. We don't need this. So a lot of people didn't like the new producers, Mystical for sure. And he was just in there trying to be a good team player, and he wasn't liking the way it was sounding, and was like, "I can't do it." And I, I want out. It was just plain and simple. Uh, he talked to P. They had a heart to heart. And P told him, Come on, man. You you gonna you gonna lead a team like that? Everybody else was leaving, getting their outs. And P was at the mind state like, well, everybody can go then. I you know, I built no limit. I'm no limit. You know, I rebuild it back up. If y'all wanna go, y'all can go. And he let Mystical go for nothing. To show you what type of businessman he was and, and how much of a real individual he was, he let him go. He wasn't happy, he let him go. Why well, hold somebody who ain't happy? So Mystical was still signing a job. You know, it was... That's who we originally had the record deal with. Master Pinum came in as a third party to it, and they released him. So his next album came out, and it was his biggest record ever. But it was because he was, this is what he was trying to tell Pete as far as the direction of where he was going when he did, like, Shake It Fast, or Shake Your Ass in the, the real song. But when he did that, that's where he was trying to go with the music, instead of making the same type of records. Danger and all these other songs. You know, these are the type of records he was trying to go to. And he was going to extend all the way into the pop. And he was there. He just got really crazy. Bad things followed, and it's, it's a tragedy what happened to his career. But Mystical, Master P, that's all that happened. He let the man go. 
It's your boy Carcino. I'm out. Y'all have a blessed morning. Don't forget to follow the playlist, Truth Behind Hip Hop Beats. And you can always donate to the page by clicking the link in the description box. I'm out.